The Greatest Discoveries by Amateur Astronomers The very first amateur astronomer equipped with the very first amateur telescope was Sir Galileo Galilei. He pointed his small instrument towards the sky and he discovered Jupiter's moon system. Nowadays, technology has improved and with more amateur astronomers being equipped with larger instruments, along with the increasing amount of high-resolution survey data being released to the public online, amateurs are playing an important role in the scientific community. In this video, we will take a look at the most important discoveries made by amateur astronomers over the years. Perhaps you will recognize some of them. The first one is the Soap Bubble Nebula. It is actually a planetary nebula, and before 2008, nobody noticed that, essentially because it lies near a much, much bigger and brighter object known as Crescent Nebula. Astronomer Dave Jurasevich randomly found the object when imaging the sky using his 160mm refractor F by 7.7 and a 6 nanometer hydrogen alpha filter. After that, astrophotographers and astronomers all over the world have been amazed by the Soap Bubble Nebula and have captured it for their own collections. However, if you are an amateur astronomer, you need a lot of effort to make the discovery official. That's why Dave defined this discovery as a blessing and a curse. It took Dave months to look over every known catalog, amateur photos, forums, and even literature to make sure the bubble wasn't previously discovered. After many reports and emails with the IAU, his discovery was made official. In 2013, five years later, the World Reference Database for the Identification of Astronomical Objects, located in Strasbourg, gave Jurasevich's Soap Bubble Nebula the designation of JU-1. We can appreciate in this picture the features of both the Crescent Nebula and Soap Bubble Nebula. The Soap Bubble is the smaller object on the left side. These clouds of gas and dust drift through rich star fields along the plane of our Milky Way galaxy toward the high-flying constellation Cygnus. Both were formed at a final phase in the life of a star, also known as NGC 6888. The crescent was shaped as its bright central massive star, which shed its outer envelope in a strong stellar wind. Burning through fuel at a prodigious rate, the star is near the end of a short life that should finish in a spectacular supernova explosion. Instead, the Soap Bubble Nebula is a planetary nebula, the final shroud of a lower-mass, long-lived sun-like star destined to become a slowly cooling white dwarf. While both are some 5,000 light-years or so distant, the larger Crescent Nebula is around 25 light-years across. We said the Soap Bubble Nebula is a planetary nebula, but what does it mean? A planetary nebula is a type of emission nebula consisting of an expanding glowing shell of ionized gas ejected from red giant stars late in their lives. The term planetary nebula is a misnomer because they are unrelated to planets. The term originates from the planet-like round shape of these nebulae observed by astronomers through early telescopes. The first usage may have occurred during the 1780s with the English astronomer William Herschel, who described these nebulae as resembling planets. Though the modern interpretation is different, the old term is still used. All planetary nebulae form at the end of the life of a star of intermediate mass, about 1 to 8 solar masses. It is expected that the Sun will form a planetary nebula at the end of its life cycle. They are relatively short-lived phenomena, lasting perhaps a few tens of millennia compared to considerably longer phases of stellar evolution. Another important discovery made by an amateur was the one of Comet Lovejoy. It was also nicknamed the Great Comet of Christmas 2011, since we best observed it between November and December of that year. Comet Lovejoy was a magnificent comet that peaked at magnitude minus 3, and although very difficult to see with the naked eye, due to its proximity with the Sun, it was a beautiful target for astrophotographers. Comet Lovejoy was named after its discoverer, Terry Lovejoy from Australia. Actually, this was not the first time Terry discovered a comet. It was actually the third one. And the thing is, he never stopped. He kept going, hunting, and finding comets all over the years. As of today, he has discovered 17 comets. However, his most famous one, Comet Lovejoy, was found using a 7.9-inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope and a CCD camera. In these days between the discovery and the transit to the perihelion, an observation campaign was conducted in the Southern Hemisphere aimed at characterizing Comet Lovejoy. 
considered of interest because it is much larger than the other grazing comets usually discovered through the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory Space Telescope. In particular, the estimation for the diameter was from 100 and 200 meters. As such, the comet may not have survived the perihelion transition, which would have seen it pass through the solar corona. But guess what? The comet transited on December 16th, about 140,000 kilometers from the solar surface, surviving the event. This suggested that the dimensions of the core are larger than previously assumed, and that it could even reach 500 meters in diameter. It was a huge comet. At its maximum, it reached a magnitude of minus 4, which means it was almost as bright as Venus. As such, it is the brightest grazing comet observed through SOHO. So far, we talked about nebulae and comets. Now I want to ask you, do you know what Stromgren sphere is? The definition is quite complicated, but it's all that we have. Hot young stars emit radiation that ionizes the surrounding ISM. The Stromgren sphere is defined as the spherical volume of this H-second region, where the rate of ionizations balances the rate of recombinations. What if I told you that an amateur astronomer discovered one of them? Would you believe me? Well, you should, because it happened. Lionel Mulatto, a French amateur astronomer and astrophotographer, is really one of a kind. He was the discoverer of 10 planetary nebula candidates using optical images and mid-infrared images from satellites. His first find, MUL-1, was an elongated nebula in Sigitta, discovered accidentally when taking images of the Necklace Nebula, another planetary nebula. Lionel discovered it as a little ball of hydrogen alpha that was visible on his camera after a 20-minute exposure with a filter. He was really excited, but astronomers have to be careful with the excitement. You have to check to see if it's not an artifact. That's why Lionel imaged the area again the next day and once again saw what seemed to be an unknown deep sky object. Mulatto contacted a planetary nebula expert at the Observatory of Strasbourg to ask if it was a new discovery, and the expert confirmed it was named MUL-1. The object now is not thought to be a planetary nebula but instead a Stromgren sphere, meaning ionized gas around a very hot star. An example of a famous Stromgren sphere is the Rosette Nebula. Similarly, MUL-4 and MUL-5 were discovered. MUL-4 appears stellar in Lionel's stellar images, but professional images were taken by the NOAO, National Optical Astronomy Observatory, definitely indicate the object to be nebulous in nature. MUL-5 appears as a blue elliptical nebula in both Lionel's images and in online survey images. While MUL-5 has been confirmed to be a true planetary nebula, the nature of MUL-1 and MUL-4 are a little less certain. Now, ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts. You won't believe what Dan Peterson discovered in 2012. He was basically just chilling out observing Jupiter on September 10, 2012. All of a sudden, he saw what looked like a fuzzy ball colliding with the planet. He thought he was dreaming. Maybe it was just a figment of his imagination. Dan asked other astronomers on a forum about the strange phenomena, hoping he was not the only one to spot this. Not only did he get a confirmation that someone else had seen it, but he also received a video. George Hall, a keen photographer of Jupiter, captured this video. He absolutely loves taking pictures of the solar system's largest gas giant. He reviewed his files from that night where he used a 12-inch telescope and a monochrome camera to capture it. George basically became famous among the scientific community in no time. He received so many emails inquiring about the accuracy of the timestamp, the image acquisitions, and a copy of the raw file for deeper study. During the week, he also got hundreds of calls from magazines, news channels, and blogs from all over the world. The 2012 impact was not the first one seen to happen on another planet. Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 was the first comet to be observed during its fall on a planet. Discovered on March 25, 1993 by the astronomers Eugene and Carolyn S. Shoemaker, and by David Levy, analyzing photographic plates of the surroundings of Jupiter, it immediately aroused the interests of the scientific community. In fact, it had never happened that a comet was discovered in orbit around a planet and not the Sun. Captured between the second half of the 1960s and the early 70s by Jupiter, the interactions between the gas giant and the comet had caused it to disintegrate into 21 smaller fragments. Did you know that Jupiter has been called the vacuum cleaner of the solar system? That's because its gravity sucks in asteroids and comets, protecting us from those objects. But it's not all good. Jupiter's gravity can also nudge an object into an orbital collision course with Earth. 
Luckily, nothing bad has happened so far. Last but not least, we want to mention the amazing discovery of the giant Squid Nebula. It is also named OU4 after its discoverer, Nicholas Outers. OU4 is the fourth nebula discovered by Nicholas, and by far the most impressive one. Nicholas's plan was to take pictures of the Flying Bat Nebula in order to try out his new astronomical filter for the very first time. Having taken exposures over several nights, Nicholas realized that a large nebulous cloud was visible on his O3 frames only. He sent an email to Agnes Acker, a planetary nebula specialist at the Observatory of Strasbourg. He said that the shape looked like a bipolar planetary nebula and it was only visible in O3, no trace at all in hydrogen alpha A or S2. Guess what? Agnes confirmed his discovery. Since the discovery, other amateur astrophotographers all over the world have frequently used O3 filters to image the area to capture the beautiful OU4. Here's a fantastic image of the giant squid nebula. We don't know much about it because it's a hard object to study. The true distance and nature of the squid nebula have been difficult to determine. A recent investigation suggests that OU4 is actually located around 2300 light years away from the solar system. If this is the case, then OU4 would represent a spectacular outflow driven by HR8119, a triple system of hot massive stars seen near the center of the nebula, and the truly giant squid nebula would physically be nearly 50 light years across. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching everyone. What's your favorite amateur discovery? Are you an amateur astronomer or an astrophotographer? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time on the channel.